Many years ago, I had um, broken up with a girl, and um, I was lonely, and um, I did a little calculation. At the time, I think the population of the world was only 6 billion, and I did a calculation that if, if, even, if every one of them even had a tiny probability, even one in a million of being a good match, you multiply that by 6 billion, that's still a huge probability that I could go out and meet somebody that was a good match and uh, so that's what I set out to do and uh, I had a few hurdles to overcome actually at the time I had major major social anxiety I still do actually earlier today I discovered how um, if I had headphones on and somebody there was loud noises or somebody honked their horn at me it didn't seem to bother me so much I got to think about some strategies for dealing with external um, uh, uh, stimuli that that seems to be a big bother but okay that was one hurdle I had to get over the second hurdle was I didn't have six billion I only had a few hundred million because I had a big fear of flying 9-11 um, had just happened space shuttle Columbia had just happened uh, but it was still hundreds of or not quite even hundreds of millions because of the social anxiety and so I set out to, to, to take care of those two problems and um, when I was working on my PhD, um, I got a nice office that they gave me to, to conduct my work, and it was so nice that eventually, one year when my uh, apartment lease had ex expired, I decided to gather all my stuff, donate the stuff that I didn't really need, and just move into that office. And um, th th there were two reasons I liked it. First of all, uh, I got I, I had to spend most of my day in the library, in public, which really helped me mingle with some of the six billion people, right? Or actually, it was closer to the seven by this point. And second, now I had money to travel places to, to go mingle with those seven billion people. So I moved into the office. And then a year after that, um, I got over my fear of flying. My advisor was talking to me about a conference in California and uh, oh no no California came later uh, in Kentucky and she said well why don't you go book a flight and we'll talk about it more I was like book a flight really I'm driving to Kentucky and she thought I was crazy I ended up driving there and um, make a long story short uh, it caused a lot of problems because I came home exhausted and uh, my advisor would just very upset that I would waste all this time. I didn't think it was a waste. At the time, I, I, I rarely ever took a vacation and getting to see things along the way. I went to see the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I uh, went to uh, some of the cities in Ohio to mingle with people. It wasn't the end of the world, but obviously that's not how my advisors saw it. Uh, and um, finally, we had another conference in California and I submitted the paper, but in the back of my mind, I was thinking, I hope I, it doesn't get accepted because I don't want to fly there. And so I really sabotaged my effort, and, and of course, I didn't. the paper didn't get accepted. Uh, and then the, 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 a few months after that, there was another conference in Rome, and um, unfortunately, I'm not aware of any way to drive from Rochester, New York, to Rome. And so it was time for me to get over the fear of flying. And I got to Rome without a problem. Uh, it, the only problem was that the trip was way too short. I, I wish I could have stayed in Rome to mingle with some of the people there. So I get home. And um, even nowadays, if it weren't for the quarantine, I'd be living in my car right now. It's uh, Right now I'm recording this on July 2nd. And um, for many years now, every summer I've lived in my car. Again, for the two reasons, I, it's a one-two punch, really. I get to mingle with people, and I save money so I can go back to Rome to, to me. Actually, I, per, I prefer uh, Poland, but uh, I, so I can go back to those places and mingle with you. I, I'm very excited because this year, our conference is being held online, so I, I save uh, not having to spend money for the conference, uh, going to the conference so I can go somewhere else. Um, I, uh, but um, it just made me realize that um, uh, a, a very low probability times a huge number is still very big, right? It's the same reason why I like to, um, to uh, 
to go to the, uh, the, the, the used bookstore and look for antique books, right? The, the odds of any trip to the, to, the anti to the used bookstore having an antique book is so low, but it's so easy to go to a ton of them, right? Especially if I'm taking a road trip anyway. I'm in Seattle, but my family's in the East Coast, and I might take a trip home after COVID has, um, has passed, right? My, my parents are elderly, so I want to wait for COVID to pass. Uh, before taking the trip, but along the way, I'll probably stop stop at every thrift store I can because again, a, a very low probability times a high number is usually a pretty good. Uh, and plus, mingling with the local people, we're getting back to the eight billion people that are my potential uh, future partners. Right? Uh, when we first went into lockdown, I, I really despise the choice of words that the health officials decided to use. When when I first heard the the words. I, I don't even want to say it on here because I hated it so much, but the initials are SD. Uh, when I first heard those two words, it was a big fuck you to me because of that, that's what, it, was, it, it, it was like a, my main wealth out there is being taken away, right? It, it, felt like, it felt like when the markets crashed, right? What, what I thought was my big wealth of 8 billion potential uh, shares of my future partner, they all vanished when I heard the words SD, right? Thanks for watching.